Hello, everybody, and welcome to our podcast. My name is Ola Voss. And I'm Yosu Sunke. Today, we will be talking to you about how the war dehumanizes the dead man in the chapter The Man I Killed of the book The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien and how war itself dehumanizes the soldiers. We will also mention who our enemy really is. We will also take a closer look how Tim O'Brien humanizes the dead man and discuss why he might have decided to do so. Hey Ola, have you ever thought about how war dehumanizes the soldiers before this? No, I actually haven't, but it's interesting to think about and to realize how the war really affects the men that protect us. Yeah, that's true. Well, in the chapter The Man I Killed, Tim O'Brien really shows how dehumanizing the war really is. How come? Well, if you think about it, the dead man was only killed because he didn't belong to the American army, which directly makes him the target. But just because he has a different uniform, does it really make him our enemy? That's a good question, but then who really is our enemy? The soldiers or the politicians? That's important to think about. In my opinion, it's the politicians, but we'll get to that later. It also mentions in the chapter that Kiova says to O'Brien that he shouldn't feel bad. The guy had a weapon, so he had to be killed. Yeah, but he was forced to have one. I mean, no one knew why the man even fought for Vietnam or if that was even what he wanted to do. True, and they also show him no respect because Kiova just takes all the personal belongings away from the man. To him, it's just another dead man. I definitely agree, and throughout the book the soldiers are disrespectful towards the Vietnamese as they play around with the dead bodies. Well, the soldiers have to be cold-hearted or they wouldn't survive any war. That is exactly my point. The soldiers have to change how they really are to survive. They need to make the enemy an object or else their emotions will get the best of them. Exactly. But then why do they even choose to fight if they know it will change their lives forever? Well, most of the time they have no choice. The man Tim O'Brien killed was dainty and fragile and didn't even look like a soldier, but he was forced to. But by who? He didn't want to be a disgrace to his family. In many countries, it's an honor to fight for your people, especially here in the U.S. And what about the politicians or the drafting? That's another reason why this man and most soldiers had to fight in the war. The politicians just send young men to war and stay home themselves. It dehumanizes the soldiers again because they are just a statistic in the war. Have you ever heard about Muhammad Ali? Who hasn't? Well, did you know that he was drafted to go to Vietnam but stayed home and got kicked out of the boxing committee for three years just because he said he didn't want to fight a war he didn't agree with? Oh wow, just because he didn't want to go, his privileges were taken away from him. Yeah, and this really shows that the men that go to war really don't have much of a choice. The war makes them part of an army, and if one guy dies, no one is supposed to feel sadness, but stay cool and keep on fighting. You kill someone that could be your best friend, but you don't know that, because you are just trying to fight for your country because some men in suits told you to do so. And do they care if you die? Probably not. It doesn't affect them. You're not a human individual anymore, but just a soldier. And given that they had to go to war, shows that their human rights were taken away from them. I mean, this really shows that the war dehumanizes every soldier that goes. Exactly, because when they return, they are different. And the war has taken their emotions and their happiness and replaced them with a cold heart and some gruesome memories. In my eyes, war simply takes away their freedom to be happy. In the chapter, The Man I Killed, Tim O'Brien gives the man characteristics and really humanizes him. He makes up these stories about the man and how he didn't want to fight but continued to educate himself in mathematics. I think it's just important to look at the things that the dead man and Tim O'Brien share, which really makes the reader know that this man isn't any different from an American soldier. O'Brien mentions that the dead man's uncle and father fought for the independence against France, as O'Brien's family probably fought for the independence of the USA. Also, the dead man was frightened and didn't want to go to war. He didn't want to be a disgrace to his family either, which Mr. O'Brien felt exactly the same way about. And they both listened to heroic stories as little kids, but once they got closer to the war, they knew they couldn't be that heroic figure that was depicted in their stories. Yeah, and showing that they have so many things in common show that the dead man could have been one of the American soldiers as well as Tim O'Brien could have been the enemy. Either way, a smart and a good man would have been killed that could have made a positive change in the world. This is the sad thing about war. You kill someone and you don't even know why you had to do it and what the man was capable of achieving. Yeah, but why do you think Tim O'Brien humanizes the man like that? I think he does that to show that war is unnecessary and that killing is wrong. This, is all, this also shows that the enemy is just a normal person like you. I agree with you, and I also agree with Tim O'Brien. Just because someone is your enemy in a war, you cannot just generalize that one individual as evil because he is forced to fight against you. I've learned that through my family's history, as so many people in Germany were forced to fight for something they didn't even believe in. 
So in my point of view, the real enemy are the politicians choosing for young men to go to war, and not the soldiers themselves. Well, we hope you enjoyed our podcast, so stay tuned for more. Take care. I'm Olavas, and I'm Yosos Hunke.